Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sound of suspense. Welcome to the fear you can hear. Even before Phoenicians first sailed out of the Mediterranean and opened up the seven seas to mankind, the rolling waters of the world have boiled from their depths some of the greatest stories of adventure, romance, and mystery. And of all the stories dredged up from old Davy Jones' locker, I think my favorite is the strange and seemingly insoluble puzzle of what happened to the Annabella. How best to start the story? Oh, yes, of course, why not? Let's read from the log of the ship that found the Annabella becalmed in the doldrums. August 7th, 1865. Log of the Penguin, Captain Brisket commanding. No wind again this day as we drive through the doldrums. Moving by paddle and steam to find becalmed a merchantman named Annabella. No answer to repeated hails. Sent Mr. Bascom to board her. His report as follows. Not a living soul aboard. The boats still snug in the davits. The captain's table freshly set for six. The crew's meal warm in the galley. All shipshape. The log records an uneventful voyage with no clue as to why she should have been deserted. Not a living soul aboard. Not even a rat. What can be the answer to the mystery of this ill-fated ship? I cannot even guess. I fear no one will ever know. Our mystery drama, Sea Fever, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars George Matthews and Brett Morrison. The Annabella set sail from Charlestown Harbor on the 13th day of July, 1865. Her captain was Josiah Adams, a huge and forbidding giant of a man. And all the rest on board were as choice a crew of cutthroats, thieves, and murderers as you could set between bulkheads. There was one woman aboard and 19 men, including the cook and two passengers. And the mood of all of them was ugly. In the forecastle, the bosun led the grumbling. I tell you, Briggs, I saw them. Six of them running down the afterhorser like old Nick was after them. Six of them, Briggs. I don't like it. When the rats leave a ship, it's a nasty sign. No, I don't like much about this ship. Seven men on the crew, Shanghai, no cargo aboard, and sailing on the 13th. Still, the bay is good. When we get it. If we get it. Now, you don't think we're the owner of Oh, we... no, no, it ain't Mr. Ames that worries me. It's Captain Josiah Adams. Huh? Not much gives me a turn, but he does. I'm big, but he'd make twice of me. More like an ape than a man. Strong as one, anyway. Yeah. Or like a bull, as you might say, if the liquor hasn't rotted his vitals. He's got a scowl on him like that colic was at him. <laughs> colic. It's no colic that's eaten him. Have you ever seen him without his cap? Huh. How often does a forecastle hand see a cap and bareheaded? What do you mean? It was when I piped Mr. Ames aboard. I went to his cabin to tell him the owner was on ship. He opened the door and I saw him. His head, bald as a white turnip, and his scalp as chewed up as the rip tied off Chatham Light. I don't get you. They say he lost his last ship in Hudson Bay. He was washed ashore and found his way back to the state's overland. The Indians caught him and... You mean... I scalped him. And he lived. Uh, you see? So that explains his sour face. He mightn't be a bad master at that. Uh, I wouldn't count on it. I think his heart is as black as his skull is white. Don't forget the rats. There's four bells. Your trick at the wheel. Let's not keep Mr. Peabody waiting. Come on. 
What more do you know? <laughs> Why don't you ask the captain himself? Uh, I think you're full of wind. I'd best get to the helm. If you're afraid to ask the captain, Briggs. Why don't you ask the mate? Just this way. Tell me, Mr. Peabody, where are we sailing with no cargo? Why did we have to Shanghai half a crew? Shake a leg there, Briggs. Uh, you're late. All bells sounded and gone. Stand to the wheel. I asked, sir, Mr. Peabody. Mr. Peabody, sir. Yes? It's like I... I was wondering to myself, as it might be, where are we headed for, sir? Africa. The Gold Coast. I knew it. I knew it in my bones. If you knew it? Why did you ask? It's black burden. That's what it is. Slave trade, ain't it? The slave trade is dead, I believe, Briggs. In America, legally. But not in Brazil. They still paid fancy prices in Brazil. That's what it is I might have known. And if it is, would you object? Me? <laughs> not if the pay is high enough. One question, sir? Any further questions or answers you'll have to get from the captain. Mr. Ames or his fellow passenger, Mr. Rogers. After you've stood your watch. They're in the cabin, if you'd care to risk it. Ah, oh, sir. Uh, so it's blackbirding, eh? Just what Christophson guessed. Wine, Rogers. Sherry from Spain. Sharpens the appetite before dinner. Something will have to wet mine. This miserable tub rolls like a horse in mud. <laughs> well, you'll soon get your sea legs. A small need of them I'll have where I'm going. You'll need them to get there. To the Gold Coast, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> the Gold Coast. Heat and dust and flies and traffic in human bodies. Slave trader Rogers. A fine job for a fine gentleman. Would you prefer a prison cell? The past is dead. I stole from you and was caught. You let me choose whether to rot in jail in poverty or in Africa in luxury. I chose the second. Now, in heaven's name, let's forget the first. Gladly. More wine. As much as you desire. Uh, there's no lack of it. Mm -hmm. More than enough for the voyage. If the captain doesn't drink it. <laughs> captain Adams prefers a lustier brew. He must be the biggest man I've ever seen. And that head... I, uh... I wouldn't refer to it in front of him. He's tender about that scalp pit. Oh, I wouldn't blame him. How he ever survived. A tribute to his magnificent constitution. The man is all steel. <laughs> Not all. What? No, well, he has at least one soft spot. Hmm? Oh, oh, is you... Uh... You mean his wife? Well, you know, the old legend is that it's bad luck to have a woman aboard. A woman aboard? Are you trying to tell me that Mistress Adams is aboard this ship? Why, of course. I thought you knew. This is no place for a woman. Oh, damn it, Rogers, I won't have it. The woman must be put ashore. I want to talk to the captain immediately. If you want the captain, you'll find him on the bridge. How do you know? Ah, my reputation as a ladies' man, Mr. Ames, remember? I make it a point to determine first when the lady is available. You'd better be joking, Rogers. I wouldn't give that for your life if Captain Adams discovered you toying with his wife. Wind's freshening, Captain. That's God's worry and mine, Seaman, not yours. Hold it to the point. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, Captain Adams. What is it, Mr. Ames? A word with you, sir. No. What? You heard me and get off my bridge. No one sets foot behind the wheel except on my orders or invitation. Hear me, sir. I take umbrage at your attitude. Take what you will. My only concern when I'm on this bridge is the sailing of this ship. Now, will you take yourself off it? I'll meet you after the watch. Six bells in the saloon and you can have your word with me. I'm afraid that's not good enough, Captain. You forget... Good me. enough or not, it will have to serve. Now, will you go below or do I have to throw you off bodily? Oh, 
what time is dinner, Cook? Oh, Captain, it's like six bells for you and Mr. Rogers and the mates. He and his lady will eat later. What? They don't join us? No, sir. Really? Neither one? No, sir. Curiouser and curiouser. Why is this lady so afraid for us to meet her? I couldn't care less. She won't be with us long enough to trouble about well, it. Still, it's intriguing. Whitey, you've shipped with the captain before. Is it always like this when his wife is aboard? Mistress Annabella has never sailed with the captain. Ah, till this time. And this time will be a short voyage. Tell me, Whitey, what does the lady look like? Is she fair? Dark? Whitey! Mm. You talk too much. This is the last time I warn you. Now hustle those old bones of yours to the galley and tend to your own affairs. Aye, aye, sir. You want to know what my wife looks like, Mr. Rogers? Oh, a natural curiosity, surely. Then let me satisfy it. Once and for all, Annabella is as lovely as I am ugly. Ah, and we are not to meet the lady? No, we dine alone, tonight and always. One further word to you, Mr. Rogers. My wife is on board this voyage because I've decided that I will never go anywhere without her, nor will she go anywhere without me. We cling to ourselves, Mr. Rogers, and need no other companionship. I want you to understand this very clearly. You need have no fears for your wife's privacy. For by tomorrow, I want her off the ship. What? I'm ordering you to turn about. You could have saved time and trouble had you let me tell you earlier on the bridge. Turn about for where? Back to port. I don't want your wife on board. This voyage is begun. The course is set and it will not be changed. May I remind you, Captain, that this is my ship. This is my ship, Mr. Ames. My ship. From port to port. Your ship in the harbor. Mine on the sea. My ship. Here I give the orders. Here I expect to be obeyed. In the name of all that's reasonable, man, in view of our business, can't you see this is no place for a woman? There's only one place for Annabella. My wife remains at my side. But on a slave ship... By my side, do you hear? By my side. Now, we'll hear no more of this. Or by the living God, owner or not, I'll clap you in irons. So began the voyage of the Annabella. Distrust and fear below and tween decks, with bad luck hoving in the shrouds like a storm gathering. Her bow cut the water with good speed, but it was towards the wake the crew's eyes turned. For the legend is that Davy Jones swims the wake of any vessel marked for his locker on the bottom of the sea. I'll return shortly with Act Two. For the first week, the Annabella sailed southeast by south, beating down towards the tropics. The crew still grumbled, and Rogers strove to drown the irresistible temptation to try and catch a glimpse of the captain's wife by drinking steadily. Two things served to deter him. The captain's wary vigilance and his fear of the sheer brute strength of the man. But once the ship veered due east and the mounting seas demanded more and more of the captain's time on deck, Roger's courage and desire began to grow. Oh. Oh. Uh, it's time to turn in. Really? What time is that? Oh, eight bells. I'd take a turn on deck if the sun wasn't down. Instead, I'm for my bunk and a book. And you? Well, the only book I care to open is the closed one that lies astern of us. Uh, if you're wise, you'll steer clear of both the captain and his wife. And that Spanish sherry, it, it's stronger than it seems. Mm. Good night, Rogers. Good night, Mr. Ames. Oh, good evening, Captain. Off for the bridge. Yeah, it's making up some dirty weather out. I won't sleep much this night. Batten down tight, Mr. Ames. 
We may be taking some seas. Are you now for bed, Rogers? No, Captain. I'm not quite finished the bottle. I'd take it with me to my bunk if I were you. You'll be safer on your back when the swells begin to lift. Aye, aye, Captain. But you'll bring us through safe and sound, won't you? I won't leave the bridge till I know all secure. I want you to sleep sound this night, Rogers. Who mans the wheel, Mr. Peabody? As it, sir. Soundest hand we have. And the second mate mans the bridge? Aye, aye, sir. Good enough. Follow me aft. Right, Captain. Here. Help me to move this hatch. Here. That's well enough. Now batten down tight when I've dropped through. Make sure she's watertight. Aye, aye, sir. Who's that? Who's there? Oh. Oh, Josiah. I thought you were gone to the bridge. I intended you to think so, Annabella. Disappointed to find me back so soon? Disappointed? No. But how did you come back? Through the stern hatch. But why? I had my reasons. You're sure you're not disappointed that I returned? No, dear. You don't find it lonely shut in here in the cabin? Well, sometimes. I'd like to go on deck and feel the fresh salt breeze on my face. And meet the crew or the passengers, perhaps? Perhaps. At least the passengers. The owner of the ship and... Uh, Mr. Rogers, isn't it? You know his name. Whose name? Rogers. You said it just now. How did you know his name? But I... But you've mentioned it to me yourself, Josiah. How else would I know? And... And you love me, don't you? Of course, Josiah. And you'll never leave me? Never. Oh, forgive me, please, my dearest. You mustn't mind my jealousy. That Rogers, I see that look in his eyes. A hunger... A burning hunger for the sight of a woman and the feel of her body beneath his hands. Annabella, you knew his name. If you've been deceiving I've me... I've never even seen the man. How can you accuse me of ever forgetting I'm your wife? Shh. How can... What is it? Someone's coming to the cabin. Who is it? I don't know. Who is it? Josiah, what's in your mind? Whoever it is, I swear I... Go in the inner cabin. But I... But you... Do as I say. Very well, Josiah. Mistress Adams, are you alone? Come, come, I know you are. I saw the captain off for the bridge for the night. Will you allow me to introduce myself? Thomas Rogers, gentlemen, at your service. Can I persuade you to share tonight's vigil and join me in a glass of sherry? Oh, how kind of you. The sight of a pretty face. A pretty <clears throat> face, Rogers? Ca Ca Captain Adams. Mine was not the face you expected to see. Oh, you see, I I thought you'd gone to the bridge. So you did. Won't you come in? Well, I think... I, ah, I said come in. You wanted to meet my wife, didn't you? Well, yes, I, I must... But not with me present, right? Believe me, Captain, you, you do misunderstand. Oh, no, Rogers. The misunderstanding is all yours. Your first sea voyage, you said. You should have said your last. Oh, no, in the name of... In the name of... My wife. Do you hear me? Mine and no one shall touch her but me. No one will take her from me. No one. Josiah, what happened? I heard... Oh, you killed him. I should have oh. snapped his neck like a chicken. But I wanted him to suffer. But how could you? He was nothing to me. No one shall have you but me. Josiah. Aren't you afraid? Afraid? The owner, the crew, everybody on board. When they find they out... They won't find out. No one knows he's here. He'd make very sure of that. 
His body will go out the stern window and into the sea. Men have fallen overboard on a rough night like this, especially drunken men. No one will know what happened to him except you and me. Ah, tremor a little, Briggs. You're losing wind. Bring a nose up, man. God, rot you for a clumsy fool. Here, let me have the wheel. Aye, uh-huh, aye, sir. Damn your eyes, you've lost way on her. Sorry, Captain. The wind just veered a couple of points. A sailor should smell a wind change. Yes, but I... I Save wanted... your excuses. You think you could hold her on this tack? Uh, just try me, Captain, sir. Here, then. But keep her running, oh, okay? Captain Adams. Yes, Mr. Ames. Can I go word with you below? I can't leave the bridge. Have I your permission to join you? If you insist. I'm searching for you, sir. I thought you were below. Are you in my cabin? Well, I knocked at the door. There was no answer. Are you inside? Of course not. It's not my custom to invade the privacy of ours. My wife is resting. I, I didn't want her disturbed. What is it you want? Can we get out of this cursed wind? don't want to leave the wheel. This fool handles it like a landlubber. You can trust me, Captain. I wonder. Come aft to the taffrail, Mr. Ames. Leave the way, Captain. Over here on the lee side, you'll find the breeze a little more to your liking. You know, I, uh, I've been concerned since Mr. Rogers' mysterious disappearance last night. Mysterious? A drunken sot who never found his sea legs. I warned him to steer clear of the deck. We did every mortal thing we could to find him. Yes, I know, I know. But without him now to leave as my agent on the Gold Coast, I... uh... Go on. Well, it's juicy and awkward. Without someone to recruit the next batch after we leave, there's little point in continuing on. So, you think we should put back for America? Or the uh, nearest port where I can pick up a suitable man for replacement. And perhaps put my wife ashore. Well, since you mention it, I, uh, I, I don't trust women too much in a business like this. They, uh, they, they talk too much. Just drop her at whatever port we touch. Oh, I should be glad to make sure she's suitably settled, if you wish it. If I wish it. Do you take me to be mad, Mr. Ames? Mad? Well, believe me, sir, nothing... Don't you think I see through your childish subterfuge? Leave Annabelle with you while I sail off to the ends of the earth? No, no, please, I... I... You too trying to steal her away from me. But you can't have her any more than Rogers could. Captain, you... Your wife means nothing to me. I'll make sure she doesn't. Just as I made sure with Rogers. Then it was you who... Yes, I killed him with these two hands. And he disappeared. Just as you will. No, no! Her, no. She's mine. Uh, Only mine. Uh, no one can have uh, her but me. Uh, To the sea, Ames, like Rogers. <laughs> the sea can hold her secrets. You all right, Captain? I, I thought I heard a... Briggs, I told you to mind that wheel. Well, I put the lash on it, sir. I, I thought I heard a cry you and said I... said I could trust you. Well, you can, sir. Oh, where's Mr. Ames? He's left. Why? Well, it was just that I thought I heard a splash and... Oh... I, 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 you, you can trust me, sir. No, no Captain. No, let go. I no. wouldn't trust you with the wheel. No, no, Captain. I wouldn't Captain. trust you with no. my life. Two more overboard. Nineteen men the Annabella sailed with, and now there were seventeen. Evil men, all of them. And Davy Jones swam the wake, waiting for them. For the captain, mad with imagined jealousy, had crossed the line of sanity. His obsession convinced him that he would know no peace 
till everyone on the Annabella was gone, save himself and his wife. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. The squall that blew up so suddenly on the Annabella proved to be a full-fledged hurricane that so fully occupied all aboard that there was no time to question missing men. Indeed, two other hands were blown out of the rigging or shaken loose before the Annabella found calm waters in the eye of the storm. Now again, discontent grows in the forecastle. The talk of a haunted ship resumes. The word mutiny is on everyone's lips. Mr. Peabody, Mr. Peabody, sir. Oh, dinner's really waiting. No, sir, it's... Uh, it's mutiny. What? You heard me, sir. Mutiny. And about to break out. Oh, Whitey. Folks still grumblings. You know, it's all talk. They wouldn't dare. Mr. Peabody, sir, I've been at sea, man and boy, for over 60 years. I know when it's talk. They say the ship is cursed. Who says? The boatswain, sir, Christophson. He says he saw the rats leave the ship before we sailed. And for an old wife's superstition, he's ready to mute. It's a great deal more than that. There's five men lost already. I'm aware of that. And most of all, it's the captain's wife. Bad luck with a woman aboard, particularly one that he keeps it away. Well, do they expect the captain to parade his wife in front of common seamen? No, sir, but they wonder... Wonder what? Some say she's a witch, that she's ugly as sin. And some say she's sick of the smallpox. The smallpox? It's aboard, sir, I'm feared. Now you do allow me. I'd best have a look at him. If he has it, he has it. I'll put him in the lazarette so it don't spread. The first thing is the mutiny, sir. That has to be stopped. It has to begin first. It'll begin unless the captain puts about. Uh, you know how much chance there is of that. You of all people. Yes, I've sailed with that captain before. I always found him a hard man, but a fair man. Not this voyage. Something happened when he brought his wife aboard. He's not the same man. I think the captain means to kill everyone, as he did the owner, and Rogers, and Briggs. I and even Paget and Breen. They were blown out of the rigging. Perhaps, sir. Perhaps the captain shook them loose by laughing. My dear, I think you're the one whose brains are scrambled. The men were lost overboard. And the two passengers and Briggs. Rogers fell over, obviously drunk. A wife took the other two. Then why is there not one mention of any of them being lost in the ship's log? That's kept in the captain's hand. How could you know that? He was writing in it. Here in the saloon last night. I was clearing the table. He left to get fresh ink and I looked at it. You can read? <laughs> In 60 years at sea, a man has a lot of time on his hands. I taught myself long ago. You're... You're, you're sure of what you say? On my oath, sir. And by God, we'd better turn back. But how? I'll not risk my neck to the hangman's noose by mutinying. Maybe... Maybe if you was to speak to the captain's lady... She's the only one to influence him. By damn, you're right, Whitey. Look, go hold off the crew till I see if the lady will come to our help. Aye, aye, Mr. Peabody. Mistress Adams? Mistress Adams? It is Mr. Peabody. First mate under the captain. Uh, can you hear me? Mistress Adams, I, I wouldn't disturb you, but the matter's urgent. Mr. Peabody, Look. may I ask what you are doing? I, uh, uh, Captain, I, uh, I wanted to talk to your wife. My wife is indisposed. She's a poor sailor. And these last days have worn her out. How dare you disturb her? I, uh, 
I felt the matter urgent. Attend me in the saloon, Mr. Peabody. First, let me see to my wife. Aye, aye, sir. Fortunately for my peace of mind and your welfare, you did not wake Mistress Adams. Now, why did you wish to see her? Well, I, uh... I didn't think you'd be willing to bring the ship about in at for home. You're quite correct. I would not. Uh, feeling sure of that, I, uh... I hope to enlist Mistress Adams' aid in persuading you to change your mind. That was the only reason you chose to disobey my orders? That no one, no one was to approach my wife? And what other reasons, sir? What other indeed? Why would you be so anxious to turn for home, Mr. Peabody? Because otherwise you face a mutiny, Captain. Mutiny? Ha, ha! I damn, I could ask for nothing better than to cut down some of the forward scum. If I didn't wear my pistols at all times, I'd have a knife between my ribs before this. Mutiny, eh? And if they do... Where do you stand, Mr. Mate? I'm an officer, sir. But an arm. We'll remedy that. Fetch the second mate while I break out the arms. Then we'll muster the crew on deck and have this out. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, what about the boatswain? Christopherson? No. I won't put firearms in his hands. The three of us can stand them off. <laughs> Turn back! Turn back! Turn back for a pack of lily-livered swine! I'll see us on the bottom first! Now hark to what I tell you! This voyage can make us all rich! No owners split now! The profits are all ours! Sail on with me to Africa! And we'll all reap our reward. Aye, deep six in Davy Jones's locker. You speak for yourself, Mr. Christopherson. Or all. Or for both. This ship is cursed. Turn back and we'll make it happen. You question my orders? I say to hell with your orders. Mr. Peabody, sir, you know what's happening aboard this ship. We'll sail under you. Will you stand by us, sir? Well, Mr. Peabody, where do you stand? You see where my pistol is aimed, Captain? At me. I suspected something like this when I found you below at my cabin. What would you do now? I'll ask for your pistol, sir. I'm taken over the ship. But I guarantee you safe conduct home. And my wife? Your wife, too, of course. And if I refuse... Don't make me pull this trigger, sir. That's just what I intend to do. Don't come any closer! You fool! Do you think I'd have handed you a loaded gun, knowing what was in your mind? God, punishment for mutiny is death. Well, who's next? Who else wants to go on trial? I thought so. We'll smell the wind. The hurricane's coming back to the rigging, all of you. And reef sail, or by heaven... Reef them yourself, old bald head! We've taken our last order from you, you murdering devil! Go back to your cabin and tell your wife... I warned you, Christopherson! Oh. Captain Josiah, some round. You should never have started this. <laughs> never started it? It's just what I want. I want to be rid of you scum. Now I have my chance. Turn back to where I will lose Annabella forever! Not a puff of air, Whitey. Uh, In the wake of the storm, we'll lie here wallowing in the doldrums for God knows how long. It's as well, sir. There's scarcely enough men left to sail the ship. Now, what there is is dog tired and half alive. How many left? Uh, Timmins died this morning. Four killed in a mutiny. One more lost overboard. And Rudge, who died in a fall from the crow's nest. It leaves five, sir. 
Are they counting you, Whitey? They're counting me. Five of you still between us. We're woeful short-handed, sir. Yes. I have a mess cooking for the crew. Can I set him down to eat? Huh? Eat? Oh, yes, yes, of course. We must all eat. But first, serve all hands a double ration of grog. Huh? Including yourself. <laughs> I'll put a cask of rum out in the saloon. Oh, I ask, sir. Before you serve the crew, though, set the table in the saloon. I yeah, ask, sir. For six. For six, Captain? Certainly. The passengers, the two mates, myself and my wife. Oh, at last, my darling. I can bring you to the table as befits a captain's wife, for they're all dead. We have nothing to fear from them anymore. Only five left, and they'll be gone soon, Annabella. You understand, don't you? It's all to keep you, to hold them from taking you from me, beloved. To hold you... Forever. Josiah. Anne, what are you doing on deck? I'm looking for someone I once knew. Who? Josiah Adams. You. But I'm here, Annabella. Here. If only you were. The Josiah I knew. I still am. With the blood of all those men you killed on your hands. They stood between us. And the ones that were left, whose drinks you poisoned, who are dying now. I had to kill them so we could be together always. Don't you see? That's what's tearing us apart. What were any of them worth to deserve to live? Blackbirders and thieves, riffraff and murderers. They stand between us no longer. Only one thing stands between us, Josiah. Why are you too blind to see? No, Anne. No, I took you from America with me. We can be safe on the other side of the world. I can sail the longboat. Just the two of us across the seas. We can scuttle the ship. And even if she were raised, no one would know her secrets. I've kept the log as though the voyage was calm and uneventful. Let them find the ship. We'll be gone. Tonight, at last, you can dine at the captain's table, as you always should have. And then we'll sail away. No, Josiah. Search your heart, and you know it can never be. It's all a dream. It's all a dream. Never. 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 Anna, speak to me. Answer me. Call for her, Captain. Call for her. Whitey. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm still alive. But not for long. I thought you were... A ghost. <laughs> no... Only one ghost sailed with this ship. Be quiet. You can't scare me anymore, Captain. I'm dying. But your wife... What about my wife? She's dead, Captain. No! She always has been. Long before we ever sailed. No! Yes. Killed when the Indians got you. Dead for over two years. No! to be, Captain. It had to be. There's nobody in your cabin. Never has been. Don't you think I didn't know? Didn't I see her die before my eyes? But I cheated death and I cheated him of her. I took her away with me to this ship. I had to keep her alive. I had to. And you had to kill all of us to do it. Because all of us Alive were proof that she was It had to be. Are you alone at last? Or will be? All of us are dead save me. In the moment. <laughs> I'll be alone at last. 
And I can bring her to my table like the lady she is. The table is set for six. But there'll be only one of you there, Captain. <laughs> or five. The dead don't mix with the living. There's only one way to find your wife again. Only one way. The last of them. Annabella, we're free. Annabella, where are you? Annabella, Anna, come to me. Annabella. Oh, Annabella. I know you died long ago in America. But you lived on in my mind. In my heart and in my blood. I thought if I took you with me to the sea, away from the land where I dug your grave, you could still live and breathe for me alone. There's only one way to find you at last. Oh, Annabella, forgive me, love, for all that I've done. I'm coming home to you. Nineteen men sailed with the Annabella, and nineteen men went to the bottom of the sea. The ship weathered all the storms, but then a ship is a woman, which only goes to prove that on land or sea, the ladies have the better instinct for survival. Somewhere in the green depths, I wonder if the captain sits presiding at his table. But if he does, there's at least one empty seat. For Mistress Annabella died on land. She'll never come back to the sea, or him. Which seems fair enough, wouldn't you say? He didn't exactly deserve a happy ending. Our cast included George Matthews, Brett Morrison, Marion Seldes, Leon Janney, and William Redfield. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. sound of better music. This is KIXI Stereo 96, Seattle. CBS News. The gas is coming to 18 states that need it most, according to Energy Chief William Simon. He says a bonus allocation will be sent to the most severe shortage areas in March, a total of over a million and a half barrels to be distributed in addition to the regular allotments. I'm Christopher Glenn, reporting on the CBS radio network. There are some indications that the bonus isn't as much as it may seem to the individual driver. New York State, for instance, will receive 2% more than its regular dole, and that works out to about a gallon a car more. Simon warned during the day that President Nixon intends to veto the emergency energy bill long in the legislating if the version which reaches him contains a provision to roll back the price of domestic crude oil. But the warning did not deter the Senate, which passed the measure with enough votes to spare to indicate a veto could be overridden. House action on the bill is expected without delay. The Energy Office has also issued a clarification of its controversial policy on service stations treatment for regular customers. The office said its official line on giving everybody, regulars and drop-ins, an 
equal crack at the gas remains, and that also means the attendant can't provide other services for regulars, like wiping windshields, unless it's done for everyone. 21,000 gallons of oil went slicking into the Delaware River near New Jersey town of Paulsboro during the day. It happened when two tankers collided after one developed mechanical problems. The Coast Guard says it's thrown a containing boom around the spill and has things pretty well under control. The Commerce Department blames the energy crisis in part for a decline last month in the personal income of Americans. It was the first time in 19 months that the economic indicator had shown a downturn. But another key statistic, says Commerce, housing starts was up for the month, a hopeful sign. 83-year-old Mrs. Rose Kennedy, mother of the former president, has been admitted to a hospital in West Palm Beach, Florida. Doctors say she complained of persistent headaches and diagnostic tests will be conducted. Her condition is listed as fair, and her son, Senator Edward Kennedy, said tonight there is no sense of seriousness about the confinement. By Friday, Randolph Hearst hopes that the food distribution program he's instituting for California's poor will be underway, and he's called on the Symbionese Liberation Army to match his gesture of good faith by releasing his kidnapped daughter, Patricia. The food plan will be run by an organization called Peoples in Need, headed by the Secretary of State of Washington State, Ludlow Kramer, who's had experience in a similar program to aid victims of layoffs in Washington's aerospace industry in 1971. Asked what standards would apply for qualification for the food under the California plan, and Kramer replied, We don't have time for standards, sir. We want to feed people. And if people come in uh, and say that they need help, we will give them help. In the state of Washington, the Neighbors in Need program did a survey that showed that less than one half of one percent of those that came into a food bank program uh, did not, in one way or another, desperately need that help. And so we believe that if people want help, desire help, that we will supply it. Our job is to get the food immediately and to start distributing that food immediately so that Patty Hearst can be returned. So far, there's been no reaction from the kidnappers. The mechanics of the distribution program were worked out with representatives of six militant radical groups. CBS News continues after this. Some research experts say you can't taste the difference between beers. Well, if they're right, then Anheuser-Busch wastes a barrel of time Beechwood aging Budweiser. Only they don't think so. Brewing beer right does make a difference. And they're betting a bundle that you can taste the difference in Bud. When it comes to brewing Budweiser, the Anheuser-Busch choice is to go all the way because they still care about quality. Look at it this way. If the Bud people have a choice between what some experts say and what beer drinkers say, well, you'd better believe they'll go with you beer drinkers every time. When you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Secretary of State Kissinger is off for Mexico in the morning for a major effort in Latin American diplomacy. He'll represent the U.S. at a three-day meeting of Western Hemisphere foreign ministers seeking what he called a new and more realistic approach in relations with other American nations. Tuesday, President Nixon announced that Kissinger will be back in the Middle East next week, this time seeking to effect a disengagement of forces agreement between Israel and Syria on the Golan Heights front. This is Christopher Glenn, CBS News.